my air compressor working again. I'm missing the battery over here, so I had to do this little jump box thing. Filling up the uh, air tank. Check this out. I got air ride. I got a couple of fittings at my little block. They're leaking, I gotta fix that, but they don't leak at the uh, airbags. But yeah, I can uh, adjust the rear right height. It's kind of nice. I would like to do it to the front, but the front's a little bit kind of special. I don't know how much pressure I got in there, but I'll tell you what, she's a tank. And then, turn the compressor off. This is so cool. I love having this. Yeah, you just turn them on until it evens out and then you turn them off. That's awesome. Air ride, belting shocks. Gotta get some tires for this thing. Probably do that after I build the exhaust for it. But yeah, I scored this at the uh, Harbor Freight. It's like 40 bucks or something like that. And this is, I needed one of these for doing stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, this thing's been working out. I think someone just bought it to uh, jumpstart the car and they returned it immediately. So this is working for what I kind of wanted to use it for is testing, testing stuff here. So yeah, kind of excited to have my compressor back. Sweet, I'm gonna leave those full of air and do some leak checks here in a minute. Jimbo here. I'm going to make a little cell phone video, probably just a quickie. Working on the junk air truck here, and I'm wiring in and also waiting for a package to show up over here. But um, I got some cooling fans that are going to go in on this radiator. I got two fans, and I want to wire them up to the Holly EFI uh, so that the EFI can control. Um, the fans based on cooling temp and cool thing about this I'll show you later if I remember probably won't um, this EFI um, in the screen that you get you can actually change the uh, settings for um, when the fans come on and when they turn off and I set so the fan that is gonna go here this is the hotter side of the radiator on this one, I'm gonna have it set to come on at about 190, and it's gonna turn off at 180, and then I set up the other fan that's gonna go there. Uh, that will come on at like 205, and also turn off at 180. I'm gonna try that and see how that works. I try. I wanna keep this thing running around 192, which is what that thermostat um, is rated for in the uh, housing there. So we're gonna run with that. I think that would be a good temperature range. Um, the 205 is, you know, in case, you know, if this radiator can't, or fan can't keep up with it, and it turns on the other one. Now what I'm not sure is, so this wire here, uh, well, both of these wires, all three of these, uh, these two are the fan control wires. They're uh, ground only. So you wire your relay so that um, when the, EFI says I want a fan on it turns on this ground signal and it grounds the relay and it latches and then it'll turn your fan on So that's how I got them wired up. And that's how you're supposed to wire it up Same thing for this this one here is gonna go to a uh, ground switched relay and Then <clears throat> what will happen is Like I got this wire here. This used to go to the ECU the uh, factory ECU so when your AC would come on uh, this would send a signal to the um, uh, computer and the computer would up the idle to compensate for the load on that compressor. This actually runs okay as it is. It's got so much more power now. It runs okay without this, but I'm going to put it on because what my hope is is that this is set up so that when it sees this AC signal that it just turns the fans on automatically. I've already got enough 
spaghetti going on down here and I'm trying to kind of tidy it up just a little bit as I go. This will all get loomed when I'm actually done wiring, but I really don't want to buy a fan controller or run any, anything separate. I mean, I've got, I just have too much going on here and I really don't like it, but it's kind of the way it's going to be for now or, you know, forever. But yeah, so when I get, I got to go get another relay and I'll tie this into um, this one here. Yeah, so that, yeah, I'll look, we'll go over that in a minute. But anyways, that's what I'm kind of working on right now. I haven't really taped up a whole lot just yet because um, I'm, I'm working here and testing stuff as I go. This here is going to go to the fan at the very end. And then I've got this one. This is going to go to this fan here. Um, I'm supposed to get that kit today, and hopefully it fits. I ordered it for this truck. so. But uh, what I'm going to do now, my next thing is... I got rid of this relay that was over here. This actually I used to tie into the factory fuel pump harness. And uh, so I'm not using it anymore because the EFI kit came with a, uh, it has its own power, uh, fuel pump feed um, because the ECU controls the fuel pump when it's on and when it's off. Uh, so I've got a new wire running down to the new fuel pump that comes with that kit. But what I need is something to turn the tank pumps on. And what I'm gonna do is that plug down there used to feed the fuel pumps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap into that and I'm gonna use this red wire that I got down here. We're just gonna join those together. The red wire going down uh, to the old plug that I had for the fuel pump. I'm gonna, and then tie it in with the uh, Holly EFI fuel pump wire. And what that'll do is the when you turn the key on, the fuel pump, or the EFI will turn the fuel pump on for like a couple seconds. And what it'll do is it'll turn the intake pumps on for a few seconds. So whenever this thing stalls or dies, it turns the fuel pump off. So that will um, turn all the fuel pumps off. So you don't have the, fa the rail pump off and then your intake pumps on now i'm gonna get you under here it's a little busy ah uh, we gotta build an exhaust oh yeah don't don't pay attention to that uh, this is the fuel pump that or actually that's the fuel filter fuel pump right there haphazardly mounted with the hardware kit and it's got a pre-filter in here somewhere and then we're tied in to this factory fuel pump, or not fuel pump, fuel filter housing. I need to get a uh, new filter for this, but I'm kind of worried. I've, I've had some issues with these. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try and find a kit for that. If not, we can maybe, I don't know, that's a can of worms, really. Rest of the end of the truck looking okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, fed ups just arrived. 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 So let's see what we got. Gotta love these uh, Chinese boxes. They're just, you know, it's enough, but not enough. All right, let's see what we got. Anything else in here? No stickers. Not a damn splinter. Come on, knife. Might be time to swap that one out. Fan screws. This is the all uh, rub through your radiator. Things we 
might use them. Oh. Well, this is not too bad. And the hardware kit. Let's see what we got for a fan here. We're gonna go for a drive after we get. Twelve volt, eighty watt. Uh, you can spin this around to get the direction you want. We want this to pull. This was one hundred and twenty bucks on eBay. You know, it'd be nice if I can get a sponsor from eBay. Send me some truck parts. Blue, perfect. I'm running blue wire for my fan. Turn on. Oh, like a freaking glove. Gotta get some crap out of the way. We'll use our tool tray over here. Yeah, um, so what I'm gonna do. Wow, wow, right? This fits amazing. Okay, this is this is perfect. Okay, I'm definitely putting a link in the description. The bottom kind of fits into that channel that the radiator sits in. Yeah, so it keeps it from flopping back and then we can I got this kind of pinched. I mean it fits. It says how much movement it has. So it covers the whole damn radiator. I need to get another one of these. Well, actually, I was thinking for that truck, but the kit I have in there doesn't cover the whole radiator, but that thing hardly needs any fans. Yeah, so that doesn't even move. That's like locked in there. I think all we need to do, I'm gonna reuse these holes here. We'll uh, mark that, we'll drill it out. And I think I got some hardware laying around we can just throw in there and bolt it down and throw a fan in. Wow. Yep. Link in the description for that. The other thing we got to do is you see these gaps right here? I actually want to put some kind of insulating foam in there, some high temp stuff, and completely block the sides of the radiator. on both sides because what's happening is when the fans come on it's gonna pull air through here and around there and it's gonna be pulling it back from the engine base so we don't want that we want it pulling from the front and we want it pulling from we want it to blow through the condenser as well because our AC is working beautifully in this thing I also need to get rid of this fan and I know I chopped up my grill to make it fit but um, we're gonna be getting rid of this grill we're gonna be we're gonna be upgrading that's sweet I and mean, we look at it, it almost fits it's literally perfect it was just a perfect I was worried that wasn't gonna fit this fits this radiator amazingly this should keep this baby nice and cool if I have to I'll run to the hardware store and I'll get some get some proper nut and bolts but I think I have something We'll do one of them oversized holes. Might not even have to. Well, I might just do a little oversized hole. I'm gonna go see if I got a couple of uh, nut and bolt combos and we'll slam that together. I got a stash of parts in my uh, hoard in my other room. I found this brake pedal pad for manual transmission. I need that. I might have another one somewhere. And then in my stash for this um, air cleaner I got, I found this little breather tube that you're supposed to put in there 
course I didn't use it because I kind of did my own thing but it's got two screws that are about the size we need two screws and two nuts and two washers all we need Now when you're drilling right here on your rig, try not to drill into your rig. comes with those transmission plugger inner, not transmission, the the transmission cooler zip tie things. I don't really like those because I'm sure my friend Todd will probably comment on his experience with those. Kind of left him with a <laughs> broken radiator. Now I'm sure it would have been fine on this truck because this engine, you know, is brand new. I had it. Um, what are you rolling on? Get out of there. Come on, get. Um, you know, I got a new harmonic balancer. It's got a brand new flywheel. It's the correct balance. The crankshaft and rods have all been balanced together. And um, So it's not going to rattle too much. But those zip tie things act as a saw when you get those vibrations. Especially if you've got a diesel engine like a Cummins and uh, you've got basically solid motor mounts. Todd. Okay, I'm just using another drill bit as a crappy deeper. Kind of glad I'm done with working on stuff underneath for now. I mean, got to do the exhaust. But uh, we don't have to do it right now. We can work up top. So, oh, I see what these are for. <laughs> I'm like, we don't need those. These being universal fans, which I could get new ones right off of Amazon or even go to local O'Reilly's and get one if I need it, provided they got it. So, yeah, these are just clips that. Hold the fan down. So yeah, you can totally uh, orient these however you want, or totally get new fans. So that's cool. The biggest thing that I need is a shroud. That's you know we can get better quality fans. Shroud's just aluminum. Aluminum's aluminum, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I could be wrong, but yeah, we could totally upgrade these fans. It's gonna be cool. We're gonna have the, the EFI computer, the the Holly Sniper is gonna control these fans. That's so cool. Hopefully they're sufficient. I mean, this thing rolling down the road um, was maintaining just with uh, airflow going through the grill. It was maintaining a like 190, which is pretty much what it's set to uh, set to do. So it was working pretty good. Okay, our screws work. I'm gonna put some, uh, probably put some anti-seize on these. Actually, I might just put Loctite if I can find it, because I, you know, always never find my Loctite. Sometimes I kind of wish they would just not include that. Don't hurt yourself, Duramax. Everybody's got that big truck energy. So, jump pack is off. Just gonna bite onto that. So, I'm gonna assume that black is ground. 
And blue, I'm hoping, is our our uh, positive positivo. Oh yeah. Just that one right there. Oh wow. That moves a lot of air. It's so nice to have this jump pack. This was so worth it. Oh yeah. That just moves so much air. That moves a lot. It's fairly smooth, so. I like it. This is gonna work great for this truck. Okay, got my fans wired up and harnessed. They're ready to, this is ready to go in. We can mount it now. But I wanna do something a lot of people don't like to do with their TVs. They're like, oh, I didn't even know that was on there. Like, how did you not know? I always see this crap. Gonna do return it. Kind of thinking that maybe now I really do need to get an aluminium radiator for this thing. I'm not gonna put anything on it. It's got lock washers. It probably won't go nowhere. Click. Click. You don't want to torque them down too bad. You'll uh, spin the nut shirt out. So, for just safety's sake, the way I wired this connector, number one, starting with number one, positive, which is the blue, is gonna indicate the fan, number one. This one is gonna be on the hottest side of the radiator. And then we got a ground, ground, fan number two, number which is labeled number four, is this fan right here. So. Let's shoehorn this puppy in there. That sits in that lower channel. Oh, that fits perfectly. Tighten that down with a shoot. I don't even know what that is. Anyways, I'll tighten that down. It doesn't even 
doesn't even really rattle. But it fits perfectly in that channel. Abs it's like it was meant to be. Look at that. That's sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna get an aluminum radiator in here. Awesome. Yeah, link in the description for this bad boy. I'm gonna build out that other connector there. I gotta extend some wires. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be done with wiring for today and we can uh, go for a drive. All right, let's test the fans out. Actually, I already know they work, but I had a little issue. I had my polarities reversed, so it was uh, spinning the fan the wrong way. I have fixed that. So if I take my test light, hook it up to the ground on the battery. I'm going to come over to my light blue wire, which is uh, fan number one, ground, ground switched relay output. Turns the relay on. I got airflow. Now, if I go to my light green. I got fan number two. I'll permanently tidy up those wires when we're done with the other uh, AC relay. I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of wiring for today, so I'll get to that uh, AC relay and then tidy up the wires. I did clean up some of the spaghetti I had going there and kind of grouped some things together. I think ideally what would be nice is to get a uh, bus bar and put everything on that. Um, but for now, that's going to have to do. I'm thinking I want to go take this thing for a test drive. Maybe put some gasoline in it and uh, maybe mess with the timing a little bit. I'm not sure. I fixed the parking brake. Yeah! Working good now. Sprayed some uh, liquid wrench up in there. Can you see me? Good enough. Uh, the timing was not where it needed to be. Now I got the idle down to 650. And once it changed to that, I got her to uh, 14 degrees.
both fans going. That'd be perfect. Oh, I didn't take the other fan out, the one I don't need anymore. Maybe I'll do that when I get home. I'm going to show you this Holly Sniper EFI kit here, or the, the screen. What I want to show you is how to program the fans. I'm actually going to make some changes. I've been thinking about uh, when the fans should come on and turn off. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to set it so that both fans are going to come on at the same time. And they'll come on when the engine reaches like 205 degrees. And then they'll turn off at 195. So I'm gonna go in here and make some changes and I'm gonna show you how to do it.
I would slide that thing out and show you a little bit more up close and personal, but I uh, kind of zip tied it all in there. And this is screwed to the dash. She ain't going nowhere. Uh, so anyways, uh, we're gonna go home and it should be, I think it's under tuning. Is it under system? Outputs. And there's our fan. So fan one, I'm gonna change that to 205. Save, save, and then we'll change this one to 205. And then we're gonna change this to 195. Thermostat's 192. So I'll say 195. What? Their touch screen is just a little, uh, you know, you, get, you gotta use this. And I keep losing it and it doesn't have a thing and I might have put a string on it. Uh, okay, fan on temperature 205, 205, 195. Let's do 195. Okay. So yeah, that's how you change the uh, fan settings. So we'll roll with that and see how well that works for us later. All right, folks, that's gonna do it for this video. Um, the next video, I think we're gonna work on exhaust. I still gotta get a couple things for the distributor swap. Um, we'll do that later, but uh, yeah, I want to get a uh, get an exhaust on this. I have most of the stuff, but there's a couple things I need to order. I think we're just gonna build some pipes and come out and literally just raw exhaust pipe, just run down the down the length there. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, probably work on that after the Gambler 500. Me and Dad are doing that, and plus a friend uh, this year, uh, actually this week. <laughs> So, uh, if you guys are going to the Gambler, see you there. If not, whatever. Uh, the video will be on the Johnson's Garage channel because we're taking the Subaru and uh, I got one friend driving the big truck here. But it's going to go on my Johnson's Garage channel. And, uh, yeah, so hopefully uh, see you guys there. Or, I don't know, maybe we won't. Anyways, bye.